In this video, I'm gonna show you what my productivity desk setup looks like for 2021. What's up everybody, my name is Zach Brown and here on Tech Gear you'll find tech reviews, gear reviews, some tips and tricks to help you out on your own YouTube journey, as well as the occasional vlog. If any of that interests you, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notifications, that way you know when new videos come up. Now starting with the desk, this is a custom desk that was built by me and my dad. So about four years ago, whenever I moved into my house, I wanted to build a custom desk for my office because I know I wanted it to be a certain size. I wanted it to be a certain depth. So I kind of drew up what I wanted and I showed it to him and I wanted him to help me kind of, um, you know, sturdy it up and build it a certain way to where it doesn't matter what I put on it, it will hold it up and it's reinforced from different angles. So this was built out of plywood, trimmed out with some tuba twos kind of on the face just to make it look a little better so you're not looking at the raw plywood end. Now I stained it this dark color and put about 15 coats of poly on it so it's <laughs> in really good shape. You should never be able to dent through the clear coat then damage the desk so it should be kind of watertight as you would say now this desk measured six foot wide by about 30 inches deep which gives me plenty of room to mount monitors and have computers and all kinds of stuff on the desk while still having enough room to actually do work as like a desktop and that was a key feature that i wanted i knew later down the line i would want to mount my monitors that way i could open up a lot of desk space therefore i could push things out of my way and use it to write on you know use it as a traditional desk so that was a really really key point of why I went so deep. We also put a shelf down on the lower end of the desk to help sturdy it up from side to side and add some storage, but honestly, I never use it. I've got an Xbox down there and usually I keep maybe a box or two, but then I leave the rest of the space to prop my feet up when I'm working. So to be honest with you, not that much use with the shelf. <laughs> now moving up to the most eye-catching thing on the desk more than likely is the gaming PC. Now this is a Ryzen-based system built inside the Corsair. 570X. It's a fully tempered glass case. Well, four sides, left, right, top, and front. It's got a Ryzen Threadripper 1900X in it, which is an eight core CPU. It's got the Asus ROG Zenith Extreme motherboard in it, 32 gigabytes of G-Skill RAM. It's got a HyperX 256 gig SSD for the operating system, as well as the apps on the computer. It's got a Samsung Evo Plus one terabyte. It's an M.2 drive, which houses the majority of my most played games or the most recent games. And it's also got a one terabyte blue drive, just a regular hard drive, which houses all my older games that never get played. So there's two hard drives on here dedicated to just games. And doing it that way really helped me free up a lot of space and keep my stuff organized on the computer itself. It has an EVGA RTX 3080, as well as a EVGA 360 millimeter rad in the front. And everything is powered through a Corsair HX 1200i. It does have a lot of RGB on it, but I have it programmed to where on my keyboard, I have a programmed switch to where I can turn it on and off and cycle through the different changes. That way I don't have to look at it all the time, but it is cool. I also didn't realize that the 3080 did not have customizable RGB on the actual 3080 part. Typically like all the GeForce cards did, you could change everything, but this is not. You can only change the EVGA logo. Now stepping down from there, you have my new editing rig. So this is a 2020 Mac mini with the M1 chip. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of SSD. Now, since the Mac mini does not have a SD card reader, I have to have a dongle plugged in the back and I pretty much leave it there because it gives me a couple extra USB drive ports. That way I can plug my external drives into it when I edit. So it pretty much just hangs back there at all times. Now moving to the left, both of these computers are plugged into my two monitors here. My center monitor is a Samsung Odyssey 32 inch variant. It's 1440p resolution with 240 hertz refresh rate with a one millisecond response time. It's able to get those specs because it's a VA panel. Then beside it in portrait mode is an Asus ROG Swift monitor. Now this is 27 inches. It's a 1440p as well. It's a 165 hertz refresh rate with a four millisecond response time. Now it is a little bit less response time because this is a IPS panel instead of a VA. And back when the ROG Swift monitors were popular, that was about as low as you can get for an IPS. Nowadays, you can get an IPS with one to two milliseconds. It's a little bit easier to find and a little bit easier to afford. Now, both of these monitors are plugged into the gaming PC, so I can run dual monitor setups. But then for the Mac Mini, I only have it 
wired into the main monitor in the middle, which is a Samsung. And that's because the Mac Mini only supports two displays, one through HDMI and one through a Thunderbolt, but I do not have a Thunderbolt cable to run to another monitor. I've been doing just fine with just running one monitor for that computer alone, no complaints. Then the PC has DisplayPort cables going to both monitors. So I'm able to achieve that through those cables. Now, as you can tell, the middle monitor is pretty much floating and that's because I have it mounted to a monitor mount, which is attached to the very back of the desk. Now, this is a monitor mount found on Amazon by a company called Wally. And I also have a video, a review about that in my videos. And I'll leave that down in the description if you want to see that. But this is an amazing little monitor mount for cheap. So I have the Samsung mounted to it directly to the pole, which allows me to push the monitor as back as far as I can get it away from me freeing up more desk space because I don't have the monitor base on the desk itself. Now I don't have that on the left because I don't have anywhere else to mount to on my desk. Since it's a custom desk, the whole back is, is flat so I can't grab onto anything. It's a clamp mount monitor mount. So I had added on a block on the back of the desk to be able to mount my monitor mount for the middle but I have the portrait mode monitor standing on its included base so it's, it's completely normal. Now this monitor mount also has some uh, cable management things that come with it which really help out with running wires up there. And in my particular scenario I have some more things mounted up top. So on the very top I have a rod that comes out which allows me to overhead shoot on my desk which get an overhead camera shot for my YouTube videos right here at my desk off of that same monitor mount that's holding my Samsung monitor. And I've also got an attachment coming off of it holding an extra LED light to help brighten up my room when I'm filming. So all that is held by the same monitor mount with no issues, it's, it's extremely strong. Now this light is the Godox SL60W. It's about a hundred dollar light, but it's a LED light, 60 watts, and it allows me to just bounce it off the ceiling of the room and create some nice bright ambience light in here because the house lights are just a different color temperature and not correct for video. Now the last thing I wanna talk about up here on the overhead part is a little articulating arm that I have clamped here. And this allows me to add a microphone or a LED light, a small LED light, and kind of use it and aim it on my desk wherever I might need either of those. So that is just a really cool feature to have up there and tuck it away when I'm not using it and have it there for quick use whenever I do need it. The next thing I wanna talk about is my audio setup. I have the Logitech G623. It's a 2.1 system. The subwoofer is on the floor up under my desk with the other two speakers being up on the desk itself. Now having a dual monitor setup kind of hurt me right here because if I just had one monitor, I would be able to have my two speakers kind of on each side of it. But since I have the portrait mode on the left and I personally like to keep them butted up against each other, my left monitor, speaker monitor, is, is hidden behind the panels. Now most of the time when I do audio work, I use headphones, so that is not an issue for doing actual work. But when I want to listen to music sometimes, I'll just take my monitor and just bump it out a hair to where the, that way the speaker can kind of get through and it really makes it sound a lot better. But the speakers are so powerful, even being behind the monitors, you can really hear it excellent. So I don't really worry about it that much. It doesn't look great, but it is there. And most of all, it's not in my way. When they're packed back there in the back, you, I really forget they're there. Now my editing headphones that I keep on the desk actually stay behind my left monitor. I just rack them on the back of the monitor stand so they stay out of sight and they are the Audio-Technica ATH M50Xs. And I've had them for a couple years now, and uh, they're excellent. They're excellent quality. They're perfect studio style headphones. Great for listening to music too, and uh, I love them. I use them for just about every video that I make, and I highly recommend those if you're looking for a good set of headphones, even in 2021. Now moving down to the tabletop, we have this big wide mouse pad. And this is my personal favorite mouse pad that I've ever used. I love the texture, I love the thickness of it. It's my second one. This is the MM350 from Corsair, and I just upgraded from the MM300 from Corsair that I've had for six or seven years, it seems like. I love it. And I didn't know they made a larger model, or I didn't know that they ever had it in stock until recently I was able to pick up this wider one, and I like it a lot better. On the left side of the mouse mat, I've got my iPad Pro. This is a 2019 11-inch iPad Pro with 256 gigabytes of storage and I keep it in a speaking case at all times. It's just kind of an excellent little thin case that I, I just really like. It's got a little a foot you can kick out and stand it up. I really like it. It's perfect for what I need it for. Now for this productivity setup, I use two different keyboard mouse setups. For the gaming PC, I have a Corsair K70 keyboard and a Logitech G502 mouse. 
I leave them plugged up all the time. They're wired. I don't have to charge them. I just slide them under that monitor and leave them. Whenever I'm not gaming, I use the Logitech Craft and the MX Master 3 for everything else, even on the PC. So with the Logitech products, you can hit a button and cycle between different inputs, and I have them programmed through the Mac Mini and the PC. So I can run my PC with those and not, ever, not even have to touch the uh, mechanical keyboard. So that is strictly for when I'm doing gaming. And I really like that because it's there if I need it. I can pull it out if I want to play anything, or I can put it away and I can operate everything with Bluetooth things which is super nice because if something's in my way, I could take my keyboard, set it aside, do some writing, do any kind of work, and just pull it back over there and use it again or use it to the side. I mean, it's a really, really cool setup and an awesome idea from Logitech. It's a really cool way to go about doing your work. I will say that the G502 is my ultimate favorite mouse. I love the feel of it and the weight. It's just, I like it. I wish they would have the technology where you can bump different um, settings or bump to different inputs, that would be the ultimate mouse for me. But for now, I'm really liking the MX Master 3 and uh, the things it brings to the table. Also, a couple things worth mentioning. Gotta have some desk ornaments. <laughs> that fake plant, and I have a lamp behind that far monitor over there that has a Philips Hue bulb in it so I can change the colors. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I have an Xbox down on my shelf below the desk and it's an Xbox One X. And it has an HDMI cable run through my desk and back up behind my main monitor and it just hangs there. So when I want to play it, all I have to do is swap the HDMIs with the Mac Mini HDMI. Technically, it used to be plugged in at all times, but when I got the new editing rig, I had to pull it out and swap them. Now I also have an Xbox Series X and let me explain why it's not in this setup. So the Xbox One X can run 1440p at 120 hertz to where the Series X can also. But I have a couple 4K TVs in the house which could utilize the full potential of the Xbox Series X, so I leave them in there. With the Xbox One X being able to do 1440p at 120 hertz, my monitors can do that in here, so it just makes more sense to have the one in here running at its maximum you know, operating rate, and then have the Series X in there running on a 4K television or a 4K monitor doing what it can do best. So. That's the best balance for me. I feel like it would be kind of overkill to have the Series X in here when it can't even run 4K in here. Side note, this Samsung monitor, the Odyssey, can also upscale to 4K digitally. It's a firmware update they gave us about a couple months after it came out, which allowed us to do that, but you can only do 60 frames per second. So if you have a Series X and you want to run 4K at 60, this monitor can do that. Now rounding out the desk setup with the chair, I have the Autonomous Ergo Chair 2. Um, I really like this chair, I've had it about a year now. It's really good for office work, but for the gaming area where you kind of want to just relax a little bit, I do find that some of the previous gaming chairs that I've had in the, in the past have been more comfortable for that. The ease of just flipping a lever and then kind of reclining and getting your seat, like the, the butt cushion to recline while you're sitting is really nice on those chairs, but for playing office work and for editing video and things where you need support for your back, this chair is really awesome. I feel like I have sculpted this setup into be the perfect productivity you know, area for me. It's got everything I need right at the tips of my fingers without having to do much movement or setup. I'm ready to go no matter what I'm doing. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and be sure to hit that bell, that way you know new videos are coming out. If you have any questions about anything mentioned here or want to talk about anything mentioned here, just shoot me a comment down below and I will answer you. And remember to check the links down here because I've got videos on a lot of things mentioned in this video and that's going to wrap this video up. See you guys.